You ever just see a game and you think, ah, yes, a me game. That was my first thought when I saw Raw Flesh on the Steam Store. As a patrician of the schizo shooter genre, and having just recently finished Dune and starting Dune Messiah, I knew this game would be an instant purchase for me. What I got was less than I expected, but still a game I'd recommend based on what you look for in a game. Rot Flesh is a surreal biopunk first person shooter with an emphasis on movement and some RPG elements. You play as this Frankenstein monsters like demigod, pieced together from the limbs of saints, you've come to this world to find a guy. There's not much in the way of story, it's got that dark tower, you're a mysterious figure in a mysterious land hunting an even more mysterious figure kind of setup. Every piece of dialogue is either you asking an NPC where the dude went, or the NPC asking you to fuck you. It's a bit weird. I really dig the style of the world, the Quake slash PSX art directions. It's kind of becoming the new pixel art for indie games, but for the same good reasons. It's economical and in the right hands, it'll look far better than any attempts at fidelity. The designs are interesting if you ever slow down enough to actually look at them. The main issue is how barren it all feels, but in a bad way. A desert should feel barren, yes, but it should feel barren and endless. This feels barren and very small. I cannot but be so aware at all times that I am in an indie game with a limited amount of space. Enemies are just laid out in these Ubisoft style camps, waiting for you to kill, then loot, then move on to the next camp. It's all very vanilla WoW school of quest design. What is interesting is how you build your character. Instead of equipment, you lead the organs off your deceased. Every organ has unique stats, sizes, and durability, so you'll likely be swapping organs out after every fight. Fights are incredibly frantic. With enemies moving as fast as you, you'll soon learn that your drug, Killfuck, that slows combat down immensely for a short amount of time, is not just an oh shit button or something you say for bosses, but a core part of the dance of this game's combat. And you get it from every camp you clear, so don't feel bad about wasting them. The organs also serve as your main reward for quests and from chests, along with the occasional new gun. And here we have the biggest issue in the game, lack of variety. None of the organs get that wild, they're all basic stat mods. Even the special ones you get for bosses are just permanent with no durability, nothing special beyond that. I was hoping some organs that would really change up the playstyle, maybe give you special abilities. This combat is in dire need of immersive sim-like special abilities, I think. The weapons are also just so limited. They feel really nice. The automatics feel fast and punchy, and the shotguns can decimate at close range, if you ever get close enough. But once you reach the second area, you realize that your new set of guns are just better versions of the previous guns. I can't help but imagine how much crazier they could have gotten. The game has this unique biopunk aesthetic, but beyond the parasite gun that just behaves like the needler from Halo, it doesn't really push the boundary that much. The second shotgun you get has a reload animation with the tongue, which is cool, but gameplay-wise, it's still just a shotgun with different numbers. Since there is such a lack of variety in the weapons and organs, and those serve as your only real reward, there's not much motivation to get out there and explore, find new quests, or even do the quests they give you, as each of those quests will just send you out to one of the encampments you've probably already cleared to clear it again. This lack of content extends to the game as a whole. It's about a two hour game if you're just trying to beat it, with maybe another hour tacked on if you talk to everyone and do all the side quests. The game has three biomes. I'm just going to be showing the first two, but I will drip check these fellows from the third one. I'm a strong advocate for shorter, smaller scope games, but I think if you're going to go this small, the $20 price tag just feels ridiculous. I mean, you've entered the price range of new blood games, which if you're looking for a good shooter with fun movement, this is the way to go. So how is that core combat then? Honestly, it's pretty good. This shit is frantic. Guns have a nice feel to them, and you're constantly moving. You have a slide that gains speed when going down a slope, and also a very generous definition of downward slope. This works really well in the desert area, as you jump and surf down dunes like you're a freeman, or playing tiny wings. Pick up some serious speed doing this, especially around corners, but still this makes me want for some sort of grappling hook or another way to enhance the movement to push it even further. The game also needs some sort of melee. Enemies move very fast and can be hard to hit from far away, so I encourage staying up close and bold, but a lack of a melee once I am up close just feels weird. I think this game could really use maybe a dedicated kick button or something like that. The bosses of the game are the true test of your movement. The desert level has an appropriate giant worm boss, which one shots and I suck at, and the second boss is a large cat with the unique gimmick that it's following a laser that targets you. Both bosses open themselves up to this matador style of gameplay, but I think the cat one pulls it off much better. 
think the most obvious comparison you're going to see people make here is to Cruelty Squad, which isn't a comparison that does it too many favors. It's also not an unreasonable comparison. Both games are surreal first-person shooters with low-poly styles made by soul developers on an odd choice in engine. But you look at how Cruelty Squad uses its biotech in new and shocking ways, and how much the augments and variety guns have you returning to the same levels in new ways, it's very clear which game wins Prom King. I don't think it's fair to want Rot Flesh to be a game it isn't, or hold it back because it isn't Cruelty Squad, but you can't help but see so much more potential in this gameplay. As it is, Raw Flesh has an amazing base that I would love to see further developed on. I would still recommend Raw from Flesh, but for most people I think $20 is a big ask and you're better off waiting for a sale. If you're like me and movement alone is just such a fun factor in games that you could see yourself spending a weekend playing this, then I would still recommend it. I had fun.